What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now tomorrow we're going to head to the yard so it's going to be another junkyard video. They've got two Accord CB7s I believe and they might have some other unique cars so let's go ahead and take a ride and see what they have to offer. 1996 Honda Prelude in tan. This is the car I was looking for a few weeks ago. It actually turned out to be in the second location which is where we're at now. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Engine and transmission is gone along with the subframe and whatnot. You can see the shifter cables there, so this was a manual transmission. Looks like I got some front end collision right there in the driver's side fender. And sunroof glass has been snatched. And check this out, guys. We got some seats still there. Someone actually pulled this driver's side seat for whatever reason. Let's go ahead and check these things out. I got some exhaust in the way right here. Well, here's the driver's side seat. This thing doesn't look too bad right here. I'm just concerned about the side bolster right here. I can actually feel some wire right there. I don't know if that's repairable or not, but the material, I mean, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna seriously think about these seats. Let me look up the price of these things. I don't know if these things are about $25 each or whatever, but that's not a bad deal for these Prelude seats. Let's go ahead and check out the passenger one. And before we go ahead and check out the passenger seat, we have no door panel, no gauge cluster, steering wheel, radio, AC controls. This thing has been heavily stripped apart. You still have the rear spoiler intact. Tail lights are gone. Got a little bit of rust repair that was going on before we had some impact. And here's the passenger seat. Looks to be in pretty good shape. I don't see too many stains. Not very many damages, especially on the bolsters right here. This bolster right here feels pretty good. And we got a lot of orange spots right here, which I do have a upholstery cleaner, which can probably take care of that. But I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna take these seats. These are period correct from Project CB9 and they'll match the beige interior perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the price of these things and that'll basically make up my mind or not if I'm gonna take it or not. Now here's a car that brings back memories for me, the Infiniti G20. This isn't the team model, which is the Touring. But back in high school, I won one of these things pretty bad. And these things came with a five-speed manual transmission, from my understanding. Now, I believe these Infiniti G20s are based on Nissan Sentra. And Nissan Sentra back in the day weren't known for its quality. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Yeah, got some broken glass. I'm going to stay out of the interior. Driver's side window smashed out as well. Let's see if I can reach in carefully and see the miles. That's a digital dashboard. I can't tell you the mileage. But this one does have the Bose radio right there. And the black leather seats. It does come with the cool fender turn signals right there. And you got the clear corners as well. So there's no need to modify those. But this car does have front end collision right there where the crash beam just pushed in. Rest in peace, G20. You were fantastic cars. Now, I've said before many times, you just don't know what you'll find in the yard. Case in point, this is BMW 7 Series. Now, this 7 Series generation, in my opinion, is the best one before they went to the UFO design. If you can see right here, got some custom headlights. And look at the paint job. Got some custom gold, which was a white car to begin with. And it looks like this is a Superman edition. Interesting. Wheels and tires are gone. Probably had some nice chrome rims on there. And you got this chrome side pillar pieces. Another Superman symbol with a rear window cover. And these are probably some custom taillights because I believe the taillights had some orange from the factory in these. AC Schnitzer. That's a BMW tuner. So who knows if the body kit on this thing is AC Schnitzer, I have no clue. 95, 740i, eight cylinder, four liter. Okay, has a little peek at the interior right there. Looks like it has some custom wiring for some audio. And you can see the aftermarket radio cage has been removed with the wires hanging out. So someone had a banging system in this thing. All right, pretty interesting find right there. Let's see what else we can find in this yard. 2003 Mini Cooper has definitely seen better days. Someone has cut the entire roof off. So someone's doing a repair on their Mini Cooper. And it doesn't look to have collision damage. So this car is in here for mechanical electrical failure. 1993 Honda Accord SE in black. Very rare car right here. Front bumper's already been snatched. Let's check out this engine bay. Looks like somebody cracked open the valve cover. Distributor's gone. ABS pump is gone. Power steering pump is gone. But for the most part, engine is mostly intact. Obviously the battery's gone as well. I went ahead and grabbed the battery hold down bracket because those things are hard to find. 
And judging by the heavy paint fade on this car, this car has lived a hard life. Let's check out the inside. Door panel is not in the best of shape. This leather right here basically should have a wrinkle effect to it. As you can see with all the heat, this thing is straight now. However, these speaker covers with the Bose, I'm going to go ahead and grab these from my friend Matt in Germany. He wants these things since he's doing a Bose radio conversion on his car. Yeah, center cap of a wheel. And surprisingly, got the OEM floor mat. It's very rare. Let's go ahead and check the condition of this thing. And you can barely see the embroidered SE Accord. And this floor mat has seen better days. There's a piece of metal popping through here. So this thing I cannot save, unfortunately. If this metal wasn't popping through here, I'd probably take this thing home and clean it as best I can. I might clean it, but it's not worth my time. And as you can see, leather seats are torn badly. These things are toast. Looks like someone's already grabbed the rear speakers. There's the rear speaker cover, rear speaker brackets, and dashboard has been torn apart already. Let's see if we can check the miles on this thing. Okay, I can barely see, but this car is 242,837 miles. And as you can see, the AC controls and radio have been ripped out. And sadly, this car is an automatic. SEs only came in automatic trim. Driver's side rear door panel, not in the best of shape right here. As you can see, there's some cuts right there on the vinyl. A lot of scuff in action. Another cut right there on the vinyl. Definitely this behind. And the rear seats are torn as well with leather. But I do see a floor mat. Let's check this thing out. So this floor mat has the SE cord right there embroidered. You can see a little bit. However, this thing is heavily soiled right here on the bottom. Heavily worn out, so there's no point in me having just one floor mat. So I'll leave this for someone else. And just a little bit of quarter panel rot. I'm not sure if this has been repaired or not, but you can see the bubbling going on right there. And obviously the SC trim has the unique 15 inch alloy wheels with these unique slots to it. And this Accord has the optional fender trim. So if your CB7, CB9 has this trim, recommended just basically pull these things off and remove them. It's basically a moisture trap. I mean, a little bit of corrosion right there. And this basically just traps in water and moisture, which will basically speed up the rusting process on your fenders. So recommended just pull them off and throw them away or just keep them. Looks like someone has already grabbed the rear spoiler. Trunk just has a wheel and tire in place. Nothing in here. And there's your SE logo right there. And here we go on the passenger side. Rear quarter panel rot right there on the corner where the fender meets the bumper. Nothing much here in the passenger rear compartment. Torn leather seats. And the door panel is in bad shape. Got a big tear right there. You got a chunk missing right there. And this leather is flat as a pancake. Definitely pass on that. And the view from the passenger seat. Let's go ahead and check out this radio. Okay, this is an Alpine. This is a good radio. However, this thing has definitely seen better days. Look at that clouding action on the display right there. Faceplate does flip down. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this radio for someone else. I have a radio similar to this in my RSX actually. And it looks like I got a distributor sitting right there. And of course the center console is torn apart. Someone had to get this radio out for whatever reason. And passenger side door panel has definitely seen better days. There's not much damage right here. However, there's a lot of sun fade action going on in the center part right there. And it looks like someone did some type of repair right there. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the speaker grill right here. Get that from our friend Matt in Germany since it has this Bose emblem. And another thing this car has is a sun revisor. Even though it says Honda right there, I don't think this is the appropriate one for this car. So this rubber edge right here should be contacting about right there. So this is too far over. So I'm gonna definitely leave this sun revisor behind. This is not the right one for the car. Now, one thing I like to have off this SE right here is these side moldings, because these are painted. And on top of that, these are 92, 93, which is a lot smaller than 991. So whenever Project CB9 gets repainted, I'm definitely gonna replace the side moldings with 92, 93. And these will be good candidates so I can repaint these things in Arcadia Green Pearl. But there's a lot of damage on these things. Let me go ahead and show you. Right here on the back, paint is all missing and chipping. On top of that, we got a dent right here. It's probably from the forklift. And right here on the driver's side, heavily paint chip action right there on the top. And then right here on the driver's side front, you got that split, which will be hard to repair that. So best bet, I'm gonna go ahead and find some better moldings than this. So I'm gonna leave these things behind. So what I'm gonna grab from this SE are the front door panel speaker grills and also the front airbag right there. So those things are pretty rare and people need those things. So let's go ahead and get those parts pulled off this car. 
All right, successful parts pulling on this SE Accord. Got the lower speaker grills on the front door panels. And also got the dashboard airbag on the passenger side. And how those front grills attach on the back side of the door panel. Basically it's held in place with four Phillips head screws. One right there, one right there, and two underneath this foam piece. And last but not least, the passenger side dashboard airbag that was removed. All right, got the parts I needed in the CB7 SE. Got the speaker grills on the door panels and the passenger side airbag. So I believe there's one more CB7 in the yard. Let's go ahead and check out that one. Rest in peace, CB7 SE. You are a fantastic car. But however, look on my inventory list I printed out. There should be a 1991 tan CB7 in its place. And it says right there, 15E. So I guess they did not update their inventory on their website. And the BMW is in position. So sadly, that black CB7 is only 90 and 93 in this junkyard. All right, here's an expensive one. 2011 Range Rover. Obviously, someone grabbed the front clip, headlights, grill, bumper assembly. Side fender grill's gone. And as you can see, the authentic wood grain starting to crack up. It's got a nice silent tear accent on top of the tan. Seats are a nice silent color as well. Can't tell you miles it's got. Digital cluster. And all the center console has been ripped apart with electronics. It's a nice looking door panel with the wood grain right there. That's undamaged. Handles have like a metal feel to them, but I believe these are still plastic. And those are some nice saddle seats right there. Taillights have been yanked. And it looks like this is a Sport HSC Luxury. And the rear glass has already popped open. And the trunk has already been torn apart. 255, 45, 20. And there's the center console is ripped apart. I don't know if someone's after ECU or something. Have no clue. That's probably the radio screen. But man, these seats are really nice. Just check out that perforated leather. These things have held up really well. Now that's the thing about these European SUVs, especially Range Rovers and Land Rovers. They're built very well with materials and whatnot, but the mechanicals and electrical are awful. These things are highly unreliable. It's really a shame because these things are built really well. All right, Range Rover, time to give up some of your parts to keep other ones on the road. Now talk about coincidence. Here's a second Mini Cooper with the roof cut off. This is green and it's a 2004 and it's an entire different location. I guess there's a lot of rollovers on these cars. I'm not sure, but seeing the roof cut off in the second one, that's pretty bizarre. 2006 Acura RL in black. Let's go ahead and check those front calipers, but I pretty much know the answer is. And there we have it. Subframe has dropped out and caliper is missing driver's side and caliper is missing on passenger side as well. Comes to no surprise. Okay, back at this 96 Honda Prelude. Now I'm doing a lot of contemplation on these seats. I went in and posted a story on Instagram asking if you guys are to snatch these things up. So anyhow, I looked up the prices. These things are going for $23 a yard or 46 bucks for the pair. I mean, I think they're in pretty good shape and I know they'll clean up pretty well. See the spot right there, but they seem to be functional, you know, with the reclining feature and whatnot. And you got this lever right here that actually does the quick front release. Pull this lever up here and test it out. And there you go. Backside doesn't seem so bad. These are basically just indentions from some parts that are here in the back seat. So once these seats see some heat, these wrinkles should go away. But I mean, the backside looks in pretty good shape. Pockets in good shape. Backside materials in good shape. Let's go ahead and check out the driver's side. Okay, so with the driver's side, someone's already done me the favor and unbolted it from the frame of the car. So it is loose. So let me go ahead and pull this lever up, see if it works. It goes forward. Pull this lever up, see if it works. That sure enough works. Now, the only concerns I have on the seat is right here on the bottom. I feel a little bit of metal spring right here. I'm not sure if I can actually refoam this on the inside. And then there's just a little bit of wear and tear right there on the plastic for the seat pullback. But this seat's already been undone with the four bolts. And now I just need to undo the four 17 millimeter bolts holding the passenger seat in place and unplug the seat belt warning. So I'm going to go ahead and unbolt these seats, give it some further thought, and I'm going to go ahead and check the Instagram poll. Okay, so the seats are out of the car. Now the driver's side, that was already undone for me. 
So somebody did me the favor. Now the passenger seat, I can unbolt myself. Now the bolt size on the front here is 14 millimeter. So it's two bolts on the front and on the back side, a very strange size. Now you can't quite see the brackets on the back side because the seat's far back. But on the opposite seat here for illustration purposes, both of these bolts are 12 millimeter bolts. I thought they were 17 millimeter for some reason. But anyways, as you can see, the back side of the seats look to be in pretty good shape. Material's not torn up here. There's a little bit of indentation from some parts it was laying against. But once these things heat up, that should basically stretch out. And same thing here on the driver's seat. A little bit of indentation right there. There's nothing major on the upholstery. So the back side of the seats are pretty clean for the most part. Okay, so here's the driver's side seat that has the most wear and tear of any car. And you got a little bit of wear on the bolster right here. The material's wearing off just a little bit, but that's not bad. And then right here on the lower bolster, I can feel, I guess, a piece of wire or something like that from the spring. But I think this material's gonna clean up very well. There's no tears in here, there's no burn marks. You can take a look at the passenger side seat. This is in really good shape. Bolster's in great shape. I don't feel no wire right there. Side bolsters are great. Other side bolsters great right here. So as you can see, the material has no burn marks or cuts and no major stains. So I think these things are gonna clean up really, really well. And I looked up the prices before I pulled these things. These things are $23 each, which is a bargain. You go get some custom race seats, you're spending $1,000 plus. So save some money and be period correct as well. All right, let's go ahead and load these things in the wheelbarrow, check out, and we'll take these things home and clean them up. Okay, Prelude seats are back home safe and sound. $46 and some change, can't complain at all. Now, the only thing I've done so far is I've vacuumed the seats with all the debris. Let me go ahead and show you guys a close-up before we start cleaning these things. All right, so the first step of the process of cleaning some upholstery is I've got an upholstery cleaner diluted down with some water. I'm gonna go ahead and spray down the seats with this. And I'm gonna take my drill with nylon brush attachment. I'm basically gonna just scrub these seats down. And basically what this nylon brush is gonna do, it's gonna break apart all the hard stains that are in this upholstery. So after we're done scrubbing down both seats with the drill and brush attachment using the upholstery cleaner, I'm gonna go ahead and take my extractor and then we're gonna basically deep clean these seats. So hopefully it'll tell a big difference once we're done with the process. So let's go ahead and start cleaning these seats down. And before I go ahead and dump the dirty water of the extractor, just look how dark that is. That's basically what was in those prelude seats right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this nasty water, but just to go show you how much dirt was in those seats. Okay, these prelude seats turned out phenomenal after we got them home from the pick and pull. Now I went ahead and scrubbed them down, got the upholstery extractor on each seat, and the material just turned out great. Cleaned up really nice. No visible stains. And here's a close-up of the passenger seat, just to give you an idea of how good this material is in after being 28 years old. Now on the driver's seat, there's a little bit of side bolster wear, but that's to be expected since the driver's seat gets used most often. And then right here on the left-hand bolster of the driver's seat, it's a little soft. So in order to make this seat perfect, I'd probably have to find a black one in the salvage yard and swap out the bottom cushions and then go ahead and recover it. But however, what happened is I went ahead and listed these things for sale. And some guy was so serious, he's driving six hours round trip to pick these things up. So I made a pretty good profit on these seats. 
I knew that they were special once I saw them in the yard. So, you know, it is what it is, but you know, I'm not sure when I can install these in Project CB9 and CB9 has some phenomenal seats. So I'll go ahead and show you guys those seats. So we'll go ahead and put the money away for something special in CB9, whether it's window tint or, you know, four wheel alignment, whatever it is, but we'll let you know. But I'll go ahead and keep you guys posted, but I'm gonna go ahead and load these things up in the truck and meet the buyer and he'll have something for his project car. So I'm actually curious what car he's gonna put him in, but he must be pretty serious if he's driving six hour round trip for these seats. All right, let's load them up and go. All right, let me show you these awesome seats on Project CB9. Please ignore the chime there. But just look how well these seats cleaned up. I mean, these are in fantastic shape. They're not ripped. There's minimal cigarette burns. I think there's maybe one little spot right there and one little spot right there, very minuscule, but as you can see, these seats are in just phenomenal shape. And they cleaned up extremely well. Did the same situation, nylon brush with upholstery cleaner and then the upholstery extractor. And man, they really turned out well. Let me go ahead and show you guys the passenger seat now. All right, so here's a close-up of the passenger seat. As you can see, similar situation on the driver's side. This thing cleaned up extremely well. So essentially, it narrows down to Project CB9, not really needing replacement seats. I mean, these seats are in great shape. I know the Prelude seats have a nice, better shape to them, better side bolsters, a little bit lower, but these Accord CB9 seats are in just great shape. I mean, they got a little bit of bolsters right there, so I don't know. I'm just gonna hold on to these seats for a while, and who knows if I find another set of Prelude seats or not. But we'll keep our eyes posted and we'll go from there. Alrighty guys, that wraps up yet another Junkyard Adventure video. Was not expecting to see a 4th gen Prelude there, let alone take home those seats. Now even though the plan was to swap them into Project CB9, it just didn't work out as I didn't have the time. Plus the condition of CB9 seats are in fantastic shape anyhow. Now the guy who bought them drove down from two states away, who then put them into a 96 Prelude Special Edition. Here's some pics they sent me and they look pretty good. Although they're not the leather ones, the tan color is spot on. I've only come across one Prelude SE, and you guessed it, those seats were torn up pretty bad. Hope y'all can stay tuned for more junkyard tours, in addition to more work coming up for Project CB9. And if you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.